I can't, I can't believe I'm about to drink this stuff. All right, Old Crow by popular demand. What's on the shelf Wednesday? Old Crow. Here we go. That rhymed. What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Mash and Drum. I am Jason C., and welcome back to What's on the Shelf Wednesday, the series where I bring you quick reviews of whiskeys that you can actually find on the shelf, including bourbons, rye, scotches, Irish whiskeys, and more. So what's on the shelf today? A lot of requests for this one. It is Old Crow Bourbon. So whatever you guys think about Old Crow, it actually started out as one of the greatest distilleries ever. James C. Crow, a Scottish immigrant, started distilling what would become Old Crow in Frankfort, Kentucky in the 1830s and started work as a distiller for Oscar Pepper. Now, reportedly, he was a very skilled distiller. He made whiskey for various employers, which was sold as Crow or as it aged, Old Crow, and the brand just took off with a really great reputation. Crow changed the way that bourbon was made in that he applied scientific principles to the process, keeping track of pH levels, specific gravity and temperature. More importantly, he wrote down his research so he could determine what made the best whiskey. So contrary to popular belief, James Crow did not invent the sour mash process, but he did come to understand it and how to use it in the best manner to make great whiskey. So Oscar Pepper died in 1867 and the brand was sold to the firm of Gaines Berry and Company, who decided to build a new distillery in which to make the whiskey. Now the junior partner in the word company in the firm was none other than Colonel E.H. Taylor Jr. After Crow died in 1856 and W.A. Gaines and Company acquired the name, they continued to distill the bourbon in a somewhat similar fashion to his recipe, but the original distillation formula died with its creator. So those substantial remaining stocks of original Old Crow acquired near legendary status. After the Civil War, the Old Crow logo was changed from a picture of James Crow to the current Crow perched atop grains of barley. A dispute over ownership of the name Old Crow was decided in 1915 in favor of the Gaines Company. Old Crow continued to be the most sought after whiskey in the 19th century. Prohibition shut down the distillery, but the brand was one of the flagship brands for national distillers as a medicinal whiskey. National distillers obtained the trademark during Prohibition and reopened the distillery after repeal. So then the parent company, National Distillers, was sold to Jim Beam in 1987. Now, although the whiskey had been at one time the top selling bourbon in the United States, it went downhill really fast in the second half of the 20th century. A production error in the amount of setback negatively impacted the taste of the whiskey and the distiller's inability or unwillingness to correct it led to many customers switching to other brands. The Old Crow recipe and distillery were abandoned and the product became what we have today, which is a three-year-old bourbon based on the Jim Beam mash bill and is still distilled there today. It's kind of sad. I mean, Old Crow has a very rich history, but unfortunately it's kind of gone by the wayside in today's market. And if, if, there, was a, if there was a bourbon brand begging to be reincarnated and brought back the way it deserves, I really feel like it's Old Crow. Old Crow is now an 80 proof bottom shelf bourbon aged in barrels for a minimum of three years. For retail price, I got this one liter bottle for 12 bucks. So the back of the bottle says when Dr. James Crow invented the sour mash process in 1835. We already said he didn't really invent it, but he was the one that kind of pioneered it to help, you know, make really good whiskey. Uh, he revolutionized Kentucky bourbon making. In fact, Old Crow bourbon was the first bourbon to begin using this process. Today, the sour mash process has become a standard in the bourbon industry aged for a full three years in charred oak barrels. All right, let's get it on the nose, guys. You know, this, you know, being that this is a Beam product, it's using Beam's classic mash bill. So it's got, you know, that, that nutty profile to it. There's a definitely like a breadiness to it. It's got a little bit of like a rye bread. Yeah, it definitely smells kind of grainy. You know, you can definitely smell the youth. It, kind of realize that this hasn't been in a barrel very long. I will say there's nothing off-putting about it. It's, you know, sometimes you pick up those really funky, earthy, youthful notes in a, in a bourbon or a whiskey, and I'm really not getting that here. It just smells like young bourbon. Yeah, it's grassy, has some peppery notes to it. I mean, 
I mean, there's a little bit of vanilla here. There's not a lot. And you kind of get like that caramel, like that Cracker Jack uh, candy corn type note to it. All right, let's try it. Here we go, Old Crow. It's very light, it's very grainy. It has like barely any viscosity. I mean, you guys, you know, you're talking about 80 proof here. A little bit more vanilla and a uh, little bit more vanilla and caramel character come out in the next sip. There's actually a little bit of a spice kick to it, which is interesting, which is surprising for an 80 proofer. It's got a nice little peppery spice to it for an 80 proofer, which isn't too bad. Yeah, the more you sip this, the less interesting it gets. I was thinking like how, you know, this is gonna be pretty terrible, <laughs> but it, it's really not. It's, it's, you know, it's just an okay bourbon, you know, I, for 12 bucks for a liter, definitely can use this as a mixer. I would not really recommend this being like a bourbon that, you know, to drink straight. I think there's, even though this is really cheap, I mean, 12 bucks for a one liter, I think there's better 80 proofers out there, you know, for the money, just in better quality that if it's not at this price point, you know, maybe it's a little bit more money, but I still feel like it's a better, a better uh, palate, better taste. God, the more you drink this, it's just, it's like drinking water now. There's really nothing to it. But again, I will say there's nothing off about it. There's, there's nothing that's like disgusting about it. It just doesn't have a lot of body to it. Doesn't have a ton of flavor. It's extremely light. It's very grainy. Man, one last sip here. Yeah, I feel like if you've ever had, so if you guys like 80 proofers, for anybody that's watching that likes to stay in an 80 proof range, I mean, there's probably some of you out there that don't like the high proof stuff. You can go with old granddad 80 proof, uh, very old Barton 80 proof, uh, Benchmark, even the Henry McKenna Brown Label, which is an 80 proof bourbon, I think are better than this. Um, those are all cheap. Even the Jim Beam White Label, you know, which is the same distillate as this, uh, could actually end up being a little bit more full flavored than this. I'll actually have to test that theory. I am surprised at how not so off-putting it was. I really kind of went in expecting the worst, but you know, it's an 80 proof bourbon. It's Beam. It's very peanutty, Cracker Jacky, grainy <laughs> yeah but if if i had one reason in this video to make it not only just to try this stuff you know for everybody that uh requested it it's also to plead with jim beam beam please if there's ever a brand to bring back to its glory do it with old crow get some get some high age statements maybe Maybe do a proprietary uh, mash bill for this one. Let it age over some years. You know, slap a, let's get a bottled and bond version of this out on the market, 100 proof. I mean, you do have Old Tub, which kind of fills that void, but I don't know. I feel like this is a brand that needs to be brought back a little bit, lifted up to its glory. And if, if anything comes in this video, I hope someone from Beam is, uh, is watching because this is a brand that definitely deserves it. All right, guys, well, hope you enjoyed this episode on What's on the Shelf Wednesday as we took a look at the Old Crow 80 Proof. Hope you enjoyed the history of it. It really does have a fascinating history. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know if there's any other shelfers that you guys have been eyeing that you want me to review next time uh, right here. I'll definitely uh, mention your name. We got a bunch of people that asked me to do this one, so uh, glad I could do this one for you. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. Let me know what you think of this one, or if there's any other 80 proofers that you would much rather have over the Old Crow. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers. See you next time right here on the Mash and Drum. Take care, everybody.